hoping you can hear me and that this is going to work and I'm not going to have any problems with signal or anything. Um, so give me a comment or a thumbs up or a wave or something when you can hear me. Let me know that it sounds okay and this is all going to work. Um, I'm hoping it's working. I'm hoping I'm near enough that you can hear me and I'm hoping the signal is going to stay strong. So the way these Ask the Leaders sessions are going to work, uh, I'm going to share with you my journey with Osborne, what made me decide to join, what made me decide to go for promotion, how I went about that, um, you know, what being a team leader is, what it's involved and, and then how it went on to develop into more really. So I'm going to go through some of those things with you, try and put some facts and figures in there as well. Can you hear me? Marie and Jessica have both said hi, um, so I'm hoping you can both hear me. Can someone let me know? that you can hear me um i'm sorry my kids are all still up and running around so if you hear um them as well then um don't worry about that just scroll down and see uh gary's joined hi gary hi amy gary can you let me know if you can hear me please because what i really want to know is that the sound's okay and you can all hear what i'm saying or oh, this is going to be very boring because no one can hear what i'm saying i wonder if i can test on this um Let's see if I can scroll down. Still working, excellent. That's what I wanted to hear. So I'm just gonna give it until two minutes, um, and then I'm gonna get started. So I hope you've all had a great Monday. It's the start of the summer holidays. Um, I've had a really good start today. Someone actually took one of my kids out for the day, which meant I was able to go to a network meeting, um, which was really unexpected. And it was a really nice room and it had an amazing curry and pudding. Um, so actually I managed to take my two children out and me, give them lunch and did some work at the same time. So it was fantastic. Um, and yeah, so I've had quite a good start so far. All right, just going through. Okay, so let's get Going. So obviously I am Sarah, you know who I am. I live in Leamington Spa and I have four children. I had three children when I first joined Osborne. I conceived four for about two weeks later. Um, so I joined purely to get some cheaper books. That was all I was after. I've gone round to my friend Stacey's house. I don't think it's online at the moment. Her daughter is currently in my house though. Um, and she was having a coffee morning and she had signed up to Osborne, not to do it as a business, but also because she wanted cheaper books. And I went around and I was going to order like a £60 worth of books. And because I'd done um, network marketing before, I'd worked for a company called Forever Living. I understood how a starter pack worked and what that was about. So I asked the question, um, you know, is it going to be better for me to sign up and place my first order? And then I um, will have the books as well. We went through it. Back then it was only £38 to join. Um, and it was something called a bump kit that you got back then as well. So it was like 180 or 200 pounds worth of books. It was a bigger kit anyway, uh, which I didn't even know about until it arrived. But it was really good. So I decided to do that. That was all I wanted to do. I had absolutely no intention of doing anything else with this business at all, which is quite hilarious when I look back now on how much I spend on this business. Um, so my box of books arrived. I shoved them in the corner and I went on holiday for the weekend down to Butlins in Minehead, lovely. Came back, thought I should do something with these books, um, apologies if I miss any comments, um, and I came back, thought um, I need to order about £60 worth, but the minimum target is 120 I will have a few friends round from school for coffee and cake, and we shall, if they want to buy anything as well. So I had those people round in the week, it was a Wednesday morning, I had 10 people turn up and I sold £287 worth of books. So I was like, ooh, okay. Um, I then found out about that we could work with schools and I was quite heavily involved in our school PTA. So I loved the idea of being able to help them get some free books. Um, they've still never actually had a ready study read from me. They have had a couple of book fairs though and I go there every parent's evening and I, I have managed to get quite a few books into the school that way, um, free books to them, but they've never held a ready study read. Um, but, so I, I can maybe do that. So I took the books to a coffee morning at school, I took another hundred pound order. All of a sudden, hit my kit boost without even knowing what my kit boost was. And then, because it was in the run up to Christmas, I did a few, a few events as well. Now, I had what you would say was a really lucky start with Osborne. 
So for me, my first party was a great success. It enabled me to hit my kit boost. Um, then went on to hit my kit refund because it was coming up to Christmas and I was able to go out to lots of events. And out of nowhere, I had a message. I say luck. I was obviously using my own timeline and my page um, and I was showing people I was doing Osborne. I wasn't just hiding the box away. It was very obvious to people that I now had Osborne books and if they wanted to buy them, they could buy them from me. Out of the blue though, I had someone message me and say that they used to work with Osborne and they'd like to re-sign up and could they sign up under me? I had no clue really what that was about, but I said yes, um, absolutely. If you're going to sign up, you may as well sign up under me. Back then we had to so I had to stuff my like all-in-one photocopy printer, drag it into the living room, plug it into the phone line, and all of a sudden I could send faxes. So that's how we used to sign people up. We had to fill in the form, we had to sign it, we had to fax it in, we had to wait for the head office to receive the fax, and then they go on. So now that they can sign up for our websites and the fact that everyone gets a website, because we didn't get websites back then either. It was only five years ago. It feels like it was the dark ages. Um, so I had, suddenly had a team member. Then Stacey said to me, oh, the company's got this event, this Scala thing. It's down the road in Stratford, which is literally 15 minutes from my house. Shall we go along? And I was like, do you know what? I'm now pregnant. I'm tired. I'm shattered. The night away in my own bed sounds amazing. i a drink. So I went, yep, let's go. We'll go for that. We'll go to this event. And it really opened up my eyes. So what that event allowed me to do was to hear all these stories of all these most amazing, inspirational women who are going up on stage and winning these awards and, you know, how this was their full-time income and that they absolutely loved what they were doing. And I think that's for me, is where my things changed in my head. So I suddenly realised that I was sat there going, I don't want a business, I'm not looking for a business. Um that's not it's not what I want to do to actually why don't I want to do it if I'm sat on here and I'm already hit my kit I've already hit my kit refund um it, my double promotion bonus had finished then I didn't really know or look or understand anything about that people just didn't seem to really hit it back then um I didn't really know what it was so so well I'm doing okay though if I'm doing okay why am I not looking at doing a bit more um, I hadn't really thought about it. Bizarrely, actually, on that day of the gala, someone else had messaged me and asked to join my team. This is where I say I was lucky because I had two people ask to join my team before I had even gone out and put a recruiting post out there. Um, so, yeah, that was luck on my side. As I say, it was luck. I hadn't actually gone out and mentioned it to anyone. I had shown people what I was doing, and that had generated interest. So... I came away from that event and went, you know what, what if I just try? What if I go and give this business a go? What if I go for it? And that's exactly what I did for that month. So I spent the rest of that January, that was January 2015, um, going on buy and sell groups, joining buy and sell groups. And what I used to do is I used to go, right, I'm going to target an area. So I go, right, I'm going to target Salvin, which is the town down the road. And I'm going to join all the Salvin groups. And I'm going to just go into those buy and sell groups. And I'm going to let people know what I'm doing. And I'm going to help people try and try and go to events in that area and I'm going to things out on their buying sales and that's what I did and I got um, more team members more team members and I really went at it I used my timeline I told friends I was looking to join I tagged people in posts um, I wasn't just ping my toe in I went all in I thought if I'm gonna do it I'm gonna go all in um, things like adverts uh, paid Facebook adverts or anything like that wasn't on my radar I literally had to tell everyone what I was doing and there were some people I was talking about it who I thought you'd be really good they didn't join and then joined two years later because they wanted to sit back and watch um but I literally told everyone what I was doing and I really went out of it and I think I ended up with 17 members by the end of that and I promoted to team leader I was like way this is amazing um but it really started to show my belief in the company a bit more and I suddenly realized that I could do this um I was working part-time as well so I was doing sort of 20 hours a week in a uh, self-employed marketing role for a local business um, and I was now even more pregnant I was still only about four months at that point I sort of got this belief but it didn't come easy from that point I wasn't a high flyer so when you look back yes I was sort of the quickest person to get to executive leader 
and sustain it. And I have been, I hate saying that out loud, one of the most successful stories Osborne have had in terms of getting to that level, getting my income, sustaining that income. I tend to forget there was this 18 month period from when I joined um, and promoted to team leader to actually getting my next promotion to group leader. And people really gloss over and forget that. It's actually probably one of the most important parts of my journey because it's the part where I stuck with it. And I could have so easily walked away because I was earning more for my part time. I was only earning ten pound an hour, but oh, that's two. When you're doing twenty hours, that's two hundred pound a week. Um, so that's about eight hundred pound a month I was getting from my part time job. My team leader pay because your volume was lower back then. You'd feel you'd fifteen hundred or eighteen hundred was about two hundred pound a month. Um, in the Christmas season, that went up to six hundred. It wasn't massive amount of money, but I was enjoying what I did, and I had this, this belief I could keep going. And I really enjoyed the um, leadership academy that I'd gone to. I'd gone to that heavily pregnant. I started to work with schools a little bit, and I could see, still see, all these other people what they were achieving. And I didn't see it in a way of looking sideways and going, "Oh, it's okay for them because they've had this happen," or "It's okay for them." did it in a way of like wow if they can do it I can do it like surely if someone else has shown me they can do it then I can do it too and I think it's really important if you can look sideways at someone but have that belief have that mindset rather than a mindset of oh it's okay for them but not for me as soon as you put that but in you have no chance it's that they can do it I can do it and I think that's something that I've always had quite strong in me actually that I've had this self-belief that I can I can do things if I really want to apart from lose weight which I'm freaking ridiculously terrible at um, everything else absolutely brilliant losing weight not so much um so I just I just watched them and thought I could do it and it kept me going so I literally screwed up my first season in gold I qualified as a team leader in the January I got paid as a team leader February, the March, the April, brilliant. I didn't need to do any of that because I'd already got gold the next season. I hit May and I made one of my, well, I learned one of my biggest lessons in this business. I had a team member who turned around to me and went, I'm promoting this month. We had quite a few team members. I went, you're going for it in May. And she's like, I'm 100% having my promotion this month. And I completely believed what she was saying which meant in my head, now I was quite pregnant, I was due in right at the start of July. In my head, I went, that's fine. She's going to do my volume this month. She's going to promote. I'm going to start thinking of the next month. I'm going to start thinking of June and putting my volume and my bits for June. What happened was that person didn't promote in May. She didn't get anywhere near. And I suddenly got to the end of the month and I had nowhere near volume. And, you know, back now, now I have this amazing income I could a stock order in or I could do something like that to get there and then I had nothing like literally we lived hand to mouth we used, my heart used to sink when one of the kids would come home with a birthday invite because I'd be like I don't know how we're going to afford the present for it because all of our money went on bills I just had nothing spare so there was no way I was going to be able to top up this order I was no it was too late when I realized because right up until the end I really thought she was going into to do it I honestly did um but I learned a very good lesson then which was always to have rely on myself and have my eggs in more than one basket so I never when someone says to me they're going to promote I'm like that's brilliant I'm going to be with you 100% behind you every step of the way you want to go for team lead promotion that's brilliant if I need the team leader promotion to build my own business forward I'm going to be having that conversation with lots and lots of people because I never want to have my business fail because I completely put it on one person. Um, so that was a really big lesson I learned then. So that meant by not qualifying in that May, I was already out of gold, out of bronze, and out of silver, and out of business development program the next season. I could have quite easily at that point, when I've only earned like a couple of hundred quid, um, have gone, do you know what, what's the point? Well, I'm, I'm pregnant, I'm tired, I've got three children already, I've got this other job in some money we're okay we haven't really got any spare money you know why am I keeping going I already had some team members and now you know that drives me as well if I'm doing it for someone else that massively drives me so the fact I wanted to help them succeed 
really pushed me through. So that team member did go on to promote. She promoted in the July, which is fantastic. I got paid as team leader in the June. I got paid as team leader in the July because she promoted. And then I realized I completely buggered up August as well. It was proper learning year for me that year. And I, what I try and do now is try and help you guys to learn from the mistakes I made. So August has the potential to be outstandingly brilliant. And I have to say, for the last three years, us as a team have outshone pretty much every other team and we always have the most outstandingly brilliant August. We start getting Christmas orders in. We use July and August as heavily promotion. Um, promotion. We do use them heavily for promotion months. We get people promoted at team leader ready to hit the Christmas season when it goes crazy and loads of sales come in because if you're a team leader by the time you get to the Christmas season you're getting a whole extra 5% of team volume on top of your already 6% of mental volume and on top of your 24% sales volume so you are earning far 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 more in that run up to Christmas than if you were just uh, an organizer so if you haven't started to think about that yet August is your month to promote honestly us speak to your mentor if you haven't thought about it and you go and actually yeah that's a good idea um let them know now because you can start your plan in the last week of july hit the last week of july absolutely hard bringing on team members and you will guarantee yourself a promotion in august um, it's why we have the banner incentive that the higher amount is in august because it helps with those promotions um you know it is all planned it is all thought out it's not just an ad hoc thing i do it is to help you guys get through summer um in that year in 2015 I hadn't got a clue that people went on holiday in August and that people might not buy um, and I didn't think to start launching Christmas books I just did I so I completely I promoted out my team leader I lost all of her volume and I suddenly found myself in August with very very little team sales volume at all so I had to rebuild I had to start from scratch and I had to bring in more people than I had to hit the buy and sell groups again um, and I would just mix up so many different posts. So in that season, there was two key people who joined and they're still in this group now and they're still team leaders. And that's Joe Hayden and Helen McIntyre. And they both joined in very different ways, but very similar at the same time. They both joined from posts in buy and sell groups. Helen had joined from a post completely out of the blue, which was a different tactic for me. I went out and I put posts out there which had a joining link. Um, at this point, I had to got a website and then we had a joining link so I didn't have to fax over things anymore. Um, I literally put quite a bit of information, a little bit about me, a little bit about joining Osborne, a bit about the commission. And if you want to join, here is the joining link or message me below. Um, and I didn't think anyone had seen those posts. I didn't really think anyone had picked it up until all of a sudden I got a message from her, Helen saying, hello, I joined your team yesterday. Um, but, you know, you're my mentor. And I was like, whoa. So those things can work and it mixed it up and Helen has been here ever since and is absolutely amazing she came on the Vegas traveling center with me um, and was one of my promotions the next season I promoted the same month as Helen and joined the same month as Helen from a completely different place so the one that Joe had put on was I can't remember if it was in a job site or a mum site some type of local site anyway and all I put was um, anyone love books and want to earn money from home something like that it was one line and no picture no nothing um just trying to spark interest and that post went crazy i had about 40 people um say they want info but it was very time consuming because most of these people didn't know what it was or what was going on um so i had to send a lot of information and out of all those people joe was the only one who went yep want to go ahead and do this um and it just shows you have to mix it up and different people respond to different things. Helen would never ever have commented on that post because it didn't give enough information for her. Um, for, for Jo, it was it was intriguing enough for her to want to find out more, like many other people wanted to find out more. But it's just mixing it up and trying to work out what what it was. But again, I had knew I had to rebuild and I'd gone on this drive that I just had to go out and try different things. And I think that's what keeps me going and when people ask oh, what makes you succeed when other people don't one i'm a stubborn fucker so i'm not going to give up sorry for my language but if i set my mind at something i want to do it um, and i don't care how down and out it appears i am i will find a way to claw myself back um, 
And then the other thing is I'm just willing to try new things, which is when the Facebook adverts came into it. It's how, why I use ManyChat now, um, Content Cal, all these things, because I went out and tried them. Um, and so many people just wait to be given instructions, wait to be shown something or wait to, you know, be given the plan or told what the thing is. And actually, if you just keep trying, you will find the thing that works for you. Um, so I think that's really, really important to just keep trying new things and really mix it up. Don't try your own wording and try some that have a joining link, try some that don't and try some things with a video and go live in different groups. And, um, but if you want to like, get team member you have to go out with that and mindset every single day right today I'm getting a team member today I am getting a team member and I'd say, I literally say myself that, that I'm not going to bed until I've got a team member some days I get a team member and some days I don't I wake up determined the next morning going well I didn't get one yesterday so I have to get one today um, and it is it drives me it really really drives me when I set myself a target I want to do it and it's just that one thing and I don't care how it happens but I need to get a team member and when you focus like that just thinking on one thing it really really ah it just it just it happens and I watch it time and time again and it's hard not to get frustrated when you see people going oh I want a good group what have you done oh, I posted on two groups this week and you go no 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 you need to post on your timeline you need to tell everyone you need to get leaflets out to people you need to shout it from the rooftops that you love this business this business is incredible this business builds you an income it's uncapped you can earn whatever you want this business helps children to read it puts books into schools and nurseries without using their budget it sparks imagination just one child out there could pick up an Osborne book in their school which one of you provided and it could completely change that child's life you could turn them on a route to become an inventor or an actor or whatever it is we do that that is what we do in this business and we get paid for it it's absolutely incredible it's not easy no one said hey join Osborne books at home you're going to be a millionaire overnight no it's incredible i get paid by helping you guys get paid and by helping schools get free books and children get wonderful books that is just mind-blowing like honestly it's mine I, I absolutely love what i do and i think when you love what you do and you sing it from the rooftops that shines through to people people can feel that passion it's incredible um you know i love books absolutely love books I love you guys more and for me that's more important that being able to help other people it came out actually at leadership academy i'm going to go on a tangent slightly now um when we was at the last leadership academy and dream bigger we did an exercise on on our why and for me i've always known my wife for quite a while now and that it's to help every mum know they can have a choice they don't have to choose career over children they don't have to choose being a stay-at-home mum over career you can have both. Someone said something to me, it was Keely Horn actually, who's not in the group anymore, um, another executive leader. She said, why mums? Why just mums? Why not people? Why not mums and dads? I was like, well, I don't know. Maybe it is mums and dads. And then as I listened to other people, it hit me so hard. The reason I, it's so important for me to get this message to other mums that they can have this income that I have and they can still be at home with the children is because my mum passed away when she was 54. I was 17 when I lost my mum to cancer and there was so much she had wanted to do with her life so much potential that woman had and she literally married and brought up her kids and did cleaning jobs and little bits here and there she had an allowance from my dad from what she was allowed to do and I think for me I grew up you know, wanting to be like my mum because she was an incredible passionate caring woman and you know she did amazing things to me and my brother I also didn't want to not have my own income and not have my independence. I didn't want to die at 54 and not go on the holidays that I wanted to go on. Just, and I think for me now, that's so, so powerful in why I want so many other people to get it. And I've learned to accept and not everyone in this business is going to be amazing. Not everyone in this business is going to want it as much as I do. Not everyone in this business is going to be willing to lose an hour's sleep or miss an episode of their program because they're going to come and do a live video like this or they're going to have recruiting conversations rather than anything and i've come to accept you know some of you watching even probably in a year's time 
will have given up and not be doing this business anymore. And that was hard, really hard for me when I first started to be able to accept because I, I, I pained me. I'd failed this person really like I, that's how I felt. I felt like I'm need to help this person. I want this person so much to see what I see and to do what I see and, and realize that if you just put that passion and that work into it, the business is amazing. Um, I've learned to accept that I, you know, not everyone does it. Not everyone's grown up in the same life and the same shoes and that's okay. And not everyone needs the money in the same way or needs that passion in the same way or wants to help people in that same way. And that's okay. Um, so I have learned, learned to accept that I've gone on a, a massive tangent. Sorry, I'm rubbish at sticking to time with these things. Um, can't even remember where I got to. So yeah, so that's what I used to do. So I, I would go out with these posts and I'd mix them up and I'd try and get different people. So then when it got to Christmas time, November that year, I had my 600 and nearly 700 pound paycheck which is brilliant that was me with one team leader her hitting productivity which is 3600 me hitting productivity 3600 you get an extra bonus as a team leader when you get that um so i had nearly 700 pound in one month and i was like wow i was like this is like this is for me it was like i've made it it paid for us to go for a weekend at winter wonderland in butlin um and it was all paid for by me and it had the biggest Oh, feeling that I could, you know, I felt so proud that my business had made it enough to be able to to be able to provide that, which is incredible. Um, so, how do you think I felt when the twelve months later the check was over seven thousand pounds? And they get, I, I wish I was in the office because I could go and get it and show it to you. Um, but they they presented it with me on stage and literally they showed me, this is what you earn. It was £697, I think, and then flipped it over and it was 7700 and something. One month. It was like, what the hell has happened? It just went crazy. Um, and it's hard because they've got used to it now. It doesn't have the same hit nothing you know that first check of like 500 pounds 700 pound blew my mind because like, it was such a difference to what we had it made such an impact on my life now when i get an eight nine grand paycheck it's like wow that's amazing that's incredible i have to pinch myself still i, I actually i bury my head in the sand a bit because it feels a bit scary to think i can earn that in one month um my income's always over four or five grand every single month so it hasn't quite got the same the same feeling to it. Um, so what happened in that year to make my income change? So the biggest thing was the travel incentive was announced and it resonated with me really, really hard. So in 2016, at the start of 2016 they announced that the travel incentive was to Vegas and I've always always wanted to go to Vegas and my husband no interested in it at all doesn't want to go not interested um didn't want to go so I suddenly saw this as my ticket of wow I can I can go I can go to Vegas if I win this and I got so fired up and I was like I'm gonna do it this is great and I hit out recruiting and it just wasn't happening and it wasn't happening and I was having these conversations and having these conversations and people weren't joining and they weren't joining and they weren't joining and I suddenly went it's not gonna happen like this this dream that I want so badly is slipping away for me and it's not gonna happen. And I will never forget what Stacey, who's my mentor, said to me. She doesn't do much of Osborne now. She is still here. Um she does a bit and she stays active and I think she will come back to Team Leader, but not doing huge amounts at the moment. And she said it was up to you, Sarah. She's like, you can either give up now and go, Okay, not gonna happen this year. And she's like, or you can go all out, do whatever you can, and then when you get to the end of the month you know even if you haven't done it you know you've given it your all I was like okay do you know what that's what I want to do that's what I need to do I need to go and give it my all and I went out and I realized that people weren't joining so I was gonna have to do the volume myself and I went out and I hit buy and sell groups and Facebook and my page and everything like that and I didn't even have lives and stuff but then so it was all just posts you didn't do videos um and I started trying to approach PTA members and head teachers 
do like a special library bundle of books. So I, I lost some of my commission. I went, right, you can have one thousand and fifty pounds worth of books for six hundred pounds and I can't remember I think I might stuck a free reading library in there as well. And I went everywhere and it just wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. And then three days before the end of the month, um a acting deputy head saw my post. They'd just run uh, a new library and the my offer expired at the end of January. And she was local. So I literally dropped the catalogue around to her house in half an hour. And then she came back to me the next day with the company credit card and the order. And then with two days before the end of the month, I had qualified. Because it's the extra books I ordered was about £700 worth of volume. And that had got me my first month qualified. At the end of that month, I then had people join my team as well. So moving into February, I had new team members. It was the scariest month and probably the hardest month I've ever had work in this business and it felt like you would die um, and I decided to go all out for it and it is, it is that like when you go for a promotion you have to go all out for it like just, just go the result of that was my business really started to pick up um, then in the April Helen and Joe both promoted to team leader and then we started to use Facebook adverts this suddenly picked up and I have Helen to thank for this actually because Helen started to dabble with them a bit I tried them a Few months before and I've got nothing from it um so I then Helen started to get a few results from it so I was like oh this is something I need to look back in that changed everything for me because they've, they've changed a bit now Facebook adverts have got harder you have to be more clever with them you have to watch your wording they can still be really powerful but they cost more than what they did back then it suddenly gave us a way to recruit without having to spend lots of time without having to have that focus and mixing things out um sorry i can hear my eight-year-old crying daddy tired tired children um so that gave us a way to need to shut the window um so yeah it gave us a way to recruit more easily and that became more duplicatable so for that point that's when everything changed and i suddenly suddenly clicked for me I suddenly felt that I was in control that I wasn't chasing my channel I got beef as well I started to really really believe I could help people so I'd got these other people for promotion they were starting to get more team members themselves and I suddenly saw the power and how this could change people's lives how much more they were earning um, and I think at that point we became almost unstoppable everything we did had this bit of us about it because we were in this bubble of momentum and I we're not quite there at the moment and I really want us to get back there but then we had this like we're all on the same page everyone in the team had the same belief had the same feeling everyone wanted to go for promotion everyone wanted to recruit someone um, because they saw what everyone else was doing um, I think January when Facebook adverts changed this year I think it hit us hard and I think a lot of people went oh and they've lost a little bit of that belief and they haven't quite got that buzz and excitement but the opportunity is still exactly the same it's still st there still people out there wanting to join someone messaged me this morning but oh do you think we're saturated now do you think it's too many all i'm seeing is so many osborne people posting stuff I'm like we're an osborne organizer but because of the way the facebook algorithm works we are going to see Osborne stuff all the play way because we talk about it all the time we're promoting it all the time friends of people in this group so our news feeds are going to feel like everybody does Osborne they don't so I went this network meeting I was at today it was like I never knew Osborne offered a business opportunity I never knew it was network marketing I had no ideas I've heard of the books I've heard that you could go into schools I had no clue that there was a business there but just because we see it all the time doesn't mean everyone else is seeing it all the time they're not they haven't got a clue we have to get that message out there to them there's only 2,000 active Osborne organizers in the whole of Europe we are working with less than 5% of all the schools in the UK the amount of room for growth in this business is huge it's huge just because the Facebook adverts aren't working as much anymore losing our belief and we're losing our desire to go out and help these people and reach these people and we need to go out and reach these people i like seriously it's incredible what we offer so that was my year it all changed and that was when we got that belief so Owen and um helen promoted in the april 
in the June, that meant I got a group lead promotion. And people like Nicola White joined, Joe Coles joined, all these people who were still here, the same Pagan promoted, Amy promoted. All of a sudden in the August, I promoted to divisional leader. Then more people promoted and more people promoted. And then all of a sudden in the October, I promoted to executive leader. And it literally went that quick. We went from a team of 35 of us to a team of 785 of us at the end of that year. That's slightly more than what we are at the moment, actually. Uh, and it just went crazy. And to be fair, 2017 then built and built and built even more in not quite the same way. I think it almost built too quickly that I didn't have any process. I didn't know how to manage a team like that. I remember having a call with our, uh, Sue Pittman, who's the business leader, coordinator, development manager, whatever she is. And she was like, she said, you're, she said, you're an executive leader, but you're an inexperienced leader and she was completely right I was not an experienced leader I don't have a background in leadership I don't have a background in management I had no idea how to lead 785 people not a clue when I had 50 it was great we had this community and I could have this buzz and it was brilliant 785 I felt like I was drowning um, and I was trying my absolute best to try and be there for everybody and trying my leaders to be there for their team and it was it was crazy it was amazing and I loved every second of it it was crazy I am only human I am a stay-at-home mum and as soon as you got given this title of executive leader I felt like I was meant to be someone else people would say oh you need to behave in a certain way as an executive leader you need to be able to do this as an executive leader what leader what training are you running for your leaders and I was like I'm not really running any training for anyone. We're just having a good time and sharing information. And we've just got this group that we're talking in all the time. Um, I didn't know what I was doing. And everything I do now, it's still guessing. It's still trying to like figure it out as I go along. I'm still trying to do absolutely the best I can by you guys. Um, I think it's really important that you know that I'm not perfect. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. So that when you sit there in the mornings and go, oh, I don't know what to do with my business. I don't know what I'm doing. Take a guess. Do something. That is pretty much what I do every single day. So recruiting stops working in one way. I try something else. I do something. Um, Facebook doesn't get seen by many people. I put a post on Instagram. I might go live on Instagram. I might do some tweets or follow some schools or do anything else i'll come and speak to you guys uh you know i'll message a friend you haven't seen for ages and go hey you know we heard about osborne that time want to give it a go um i'm guessing and every business owner in the world is guessing they've got forecasts and they're making educated guess on what the environment around them is like at the moment or predictions or what they feel is coming in um which we can all do at the end of the day, it's all just a guess. It's all just, let's figure it out as go along. Nobody in this world is better than anyone else. No one's more intelligent. No one's got a clue. Um, all you can do is be you and just keep trying and just keep guessing and just go out and do it. You do that, this business will give you everything. Everything. Just go out, the team, and it will give you everything. So that's pretty much my journey. It's continued build year on year this is the first year that we have dipped slightly in volume so the last we were up in january up in february um in march uh slightly down in april i think very slightly and very slightly down in may um and that's because we haven't got the same recruiting bars it all comes down to that some people are recruiting and I just don't feel that we're I, I don't know I don't think I'm getting the message across enough um, of how exciting recruiting is. It's really good that Victoria Pennington's watching actually because she messaged me the other day going, I get it now. I understand why recruiting is your favourite bit, the buzz on people joining and the buzz and having those conversations. And it is a buzz. You have to make noise and you have to generate enough interest and spark enough curiosity to have those messages coming in, be speaking to enough people to, to get that buzz. Um, but yeah, so honestly, go out, recruit people, get that buzz. Right, so, 
start asking any questions if you've got any questions um because i think that's pretty much brought me up to to where we are now um it's honestly i did a post the other day where i said if i can do it anyone can do it and i mean it um because again I mean, when I meet people, so I, I'm doing a lot of networking now, and I do that because it gets me out the house and it gets me in front of people. I'm not, and I, what I don't want you guys to think is I'm doing it to get, you know, and it's going to take me away from you. It's not, because what I'm also trying to do is spread the word about Osmond and spread the word that network marketing is okay and that people are making money with it. And not all these companies are about weight loss and slimming, and some of them are, and that's what I'm going out and spreading the word with. Um, one of the things I do is I give a talk, There's something called a foresight, which is an 18 minute slot um, where you talk about an interesting fact. And I tend to tell my story with that, not my Osborne story. I tell the one before and it shocks people because now I walk in the room and I have this title of an executive leader. I have a title of top UK earner. I have a title of top UK leader, top UK recruiter. Um, which, you know, I'm actually, that's the position I am in the leaderboards now. I'm not. I'm just a girl from Essex who had a coke addiction, who lost her mum at 17, who of a guy and shouldn't have been with him, really, because she only went with him because she was looking for comfort. Uh, my dad often left and left us all because he couldn't cope with losing his wife and had a crazy breakdown and sold the house I lived in and moved away. I got addicted to cocaine. Um, pretty much ended up living from sofa to sofa. Wanted to, deep down wanted to go to prison because actually I couldn't see any other way out and didn't know where to go. I rebuilt my life. I went from there. I moved up to Leamington Spa. I lived on my brother's sofa. I moved in with my sister-in-law's sister. -in -law's sister. Uh, we rented for a bit. I'd met who is now my husband, Nigel. Um, got a job. Was out of that job. Accidentally got pregnant. We had brought a flat. Um, then got the flat repossessed. Uh, we had to move out and literally I we had no money. I would literally had two children, no money. My husband's income wasn't very good back then either. And I'd have days where I was like, I've got ten pounds, I can either get gas or I can get food. And it was hard. Really, really hard. I had debt up up to here. I when I moved out at eighteen I hadn't got a clue how to manage my money. Um and I spent a lot of time self sabotaging the success that I could have had earlier um, in other businesses or other things that I tried because I didn't feel worthy because I'd because I'd taken drugs because I'd been this person who'd got kicked out of sixth form not once but twice um, you know and I was just out drinking and partying and not contributing to society so I for me I, I self-sabotaged myself a lot because I didn't think I deserved to be someone who earns 70 grand a year I didn't deserve to be someone who had great success I didn't deserve to be able to afford my own house or to have the finer things or to go on those holidays oh, I will talk about holidays I've seen the um, questions coming through now so that's another thing um, money doesn't actually drive me helping you guys drives me actually providing holidays for my children does as well so we went um, in 2017 we went to Disneyland Paris we went on an all-inclusive to Spain we went on a trip of a lifetime, which cost seven grand to Lapland. We went to centre parks in France. We've got to Tunisia, all inclusive. Uh, we did the Butlins and a whole host of them. And that's all been paid for in my income. It's all been paid for by Osborne Books at Home. And it's all because I went out and said, I'm going to do anything to get someone to join my team uh if you have a motivational dip how do you get excited about osborne again good question amy um it's you guys and it's it's action so i i've learned now as so i had a motivational dip actually this this week i had a phone call with mark franklin who's company md and he raised a few things which irritated me and i had that a sink of like oh why doesn't he understand what i'm trying to do why doesn't he understand what i'm the way i'm thinking uh, why do I want to do this when I'm working with I don't get me wrong I love Mark in so many ways and I don't want you to take this the wrong way but we we clash heads on some ideas every now and again um, I had that side oh, why do I bother why do I bother uh, then I, I look at you guys and I look at the things that you've achieved and I look back at the things that I've achieved 
And as I say, I've never looked sideways in a way that goes, oh, it's okay for them, I can't do it. I look at what other people have achieved and how happy and how buzzing they are. And I go, yeah, that's what I want. That's what I need. And then I take action. Sometimes what I have done in the past is written a list and I've written a list of all the good things in Osborne, all the potential good things and all the good things that have happened. And that really quicks me, makes me realise that the good outweighs the bad. Um, and then, as I say, I do something. So if I feel like I don't want to do anything and this business isn't working, I force myself to do a post. I force myself to post on my page, um, to send out an email to you guys, do something positive. Um, and then if I do loads of positive things and then I still feel really bad, I'll take a break. So that doesn't happen. Because as soon as I start doing some action, positive things start happening and people start getting excited and coming back. But I think, I'm like, you know, human. I go up, I go down, I go up and I go down. And last week I had my period and had that little disagreement or misunderstanding. Um, and so I went really down. You just climb back up again and you just keep going. Uh, when you post in by cell groups, what kind of recruiters post you use? Yeah, I think they were easier to get approved back then, but literally, Amy, I just mix them up till they get until something gets approved. Um, just keep trying different things. Uh, maybe don't mention Osborne, maybe something else. Maybe try engagement posts, which is, oh, I don't know whether to give this book or this book for this person for a birthday present. And then the people engage in that, try and get them to have a conversation about joining. Um, you know, it's different ways to try and do it. How did I stop self-sabotaging? I clocked what I was doing. I told myself, if I'm not going to do it for me, if I'm not worthy of doing it, then my children are worthy of me doing it for them. And I think that's been hugely, hugely influential because I, I, still, so I still procrastinate. I still self-sabotage. I still see myself doing it I stop again I make myself take action most things in this business take a minute or 30 seconds you pick up your phone and go oh look it's from a book there you go or look I'm working at the park while I'm doing this today or you know whatever it is you can normally do something in under 30 seconds which will have a small positive influence on your business um so yeah, so I just clock it and I reflect about it and go, actually, at the end of the day, have I done everything I could today? Yes or no? No? Did I do everything I wanted to do today and with actually the things that I haven't done, it's not a priority. Someone said this the other day, actually, when they stop, no, don't do something. Um, am I not doing that? Is this a priority? So if you say no, is that because it's not a priority for me right now? So... Can, mommy can you stop working and go get me the ice cream not right now it's not my priority I'm doing a live video for you and it's just changing your wording because actually if you're saying no when something is a priority um, and you're doing it wrong and you need to adjust that and you're self-sabotaging yourself so just keeping yourself in check I think it's a really hard thing to do I'm not gonna say that's an easy thing to do as soon as you admit to yourself you are the one holding you back and you don't well, if you're blaming it on anyone else, then that's not good. If you're not succeeding because, oh, you didn't do very well at school, or you're not succeeding because your next-door neighbour's baby doesn't sleep, or you're not, you're not succeeding because you're tired because your own baby's not to sleep, or you're not succeeding because you've got twins, and that's really hard. You're not succeeding um, because anything like, like that. Then you, that's a dangerous thing because you're blaming other people in other situations. If you're not succeeding because actually Osborne's not a priority right now because you're not having much sleep, then that's okay. It's not your priority right now. If you're not succeeding because actually you're just sitting at your laptop like this and going, oh, I don't want, I should post that, but I'm not. Oh, I should do that, but I'm not. Oh, I want to post in that buy and sell, I'm a bit scared. Then you're holding yourself back. Then you can do something about it and you can take control and you can make this business whatever you want it to be. Um, I'm really struggling to get my recruitment posts, have any form of interaction. Those that I do follow up just ghost me. So I would just keep changing and keep trying different things, Caroline. That's all I can do. As I said, if I I went through so many different types of wording in my posts, in my reply to people, I think I'm encouraging people to do at the moment is video massively 
video. So if someone sends you information, um, reply with, uh, so say Caroline, you've messaged me for information, I would do a personalised video. Hey Caroline, I'm Sarah, thank you for us, um, asking for some information. I'm looking for people who would like to work with Osborne Children's Books. That could be selling to schools and nurseries, coming out, you know, something like that. And then send some written information as well, going, here's a video. Um, appreciate not everyone likes to watch a video. Here's some words about it as well. Just keep going and be honest with yourself, going, actually, take a, keep a tally chart or something. How many times am I posting? Have I really done everything I can to get in front of people today? Or have I just done one post to tick a box and go, oh, I've done something? Sometimes it only takes one post and, some, you know, it can go crazy. Other times you can post a hundred times and nobody see it. The internet's a big place and there's loads of people out there. Um, and it's, it's hard to get seen if you're not spending, you know, if you've got a great big marketing budget, great, brilliant. Set up an advert, reach those people you want to reach. That's fantastic. When you don't, you just have to take the time to get in front of those people. Instagram. LinkedIn, connect with teachers on LinkedIn, connect with teachers on Twitter, um, brilliant for those for schools. Uh, connect with Facebook, join different groups, engage in those groups, get to speak to people in those groups. And if you are passionate, they will see it. If you mean what you are saying, if you're copying and pasting someone else's wording, it's not going to work. If you are passionate of your own wording and what you were doing, do a, you know, do a video, do whatever, get your kids to do a video, um, anything, just try anything and don't get disheartened when you don't get seen or it doesn't come back or you get a no. I get hundreds and hundreds of no's every single month. It's not right for them. It's not the right business for those people yet or at the moment. It might be one day. Um, I don't use daily affirmations. Sorry, I can't even read now. Um, actually. You can do, they're brilliant. I do have an app on my phone, but I never actually open it or read it. Uh, how do you get friends to host parties? <sighs> I don't. Um, I've had some, I fast some for favour. So I've used the line before, I'm going for promotion this month. It would be really helpful for me if you could help me by hosting a party. That can work quite well. Um, but obviously you can't put that out every single month. Uh, I don't rely, I do online parties. My, my page now has 8,000 followers. That's because I've spent a lot of time connecting with people, sending them back. So when you go out to an event, I'm sat in my gazebo now. So when I'm out in my gazebo, I normally have, if I've got a big event, I have a Facebook party set up for the follow a few days later. And everyone who comes in, I go, oh, follow my Facebook page. We're having a Facebook party in two days' time with some discounted books. Love for you to attend. It's just cross-promoting. So when I do a post or a competition on my page, I have a recruit. I mean, this is something I talk about many chat a lot, and I talk about using um, competitions and mixing a recruiting message in there. That for me is how I'm doing all my recruiting at the moment. It gets far more reach and far more engagement, and I get far more page likes back from it. Um, so it's cross promoting everything you do. People come to me at the end of my competition, it goes into many chat. That subscribes into a messenger bot where I can message out to them. I then invite them to my online free price sure. Then they put their email list in it then I can email them as well. So I can keep getting different people in my marketing. When I'm at a store, I'm inviting them to like my Facebook page. When I'm on Twitter, I invite them to like my Facebook page. I go into Facebook and I invite them to my Twitter. I'm cross-promoting everything all of the time. You may feel like you are in someone's face all the time. You're like, oh, I've already posted twice today. People don't see it. Facebook algorithms are not showing our shit to many people. Basically, so you need to be in front of people because if you are not in front of people, people are not going to remember you. And guess what? When they get that moment of going, I want to join Osborne now, you want to be the person they remember. And if you are in their face, they are going to remember you. As someone at this network meeting today, I went to, he went, Yeah, I know who you are because I've seen you online. And the meeting there went, Oh my God, people know who I am. That's really terrible. And I thought, No, actually, it's not because. I need people to know who I am if I want them to buy from me. When I walk into a room with complete strangers and some of them already feel that they know me, that's a good thing. They feel more comfortable. They feel they can talk to me. I don't have to stand nervously in a corner and try and talk to someone because somebody's already said, gone up and gone, I know who you are. You know, it's a good thing to be able to make noise. 
when you're working at Osborne, when do you work on it so you aren't disturbed? I'm always disturbed. Um, I'm just always disturbed, Amy. I can hear my kids in the background now. My husband's desperately trying to stop them coming out here. It won't be long until my daughter's out here. Um, I just do small little snippets. I can. If I get disturbed, I get disturbed, then I carry back on with the task. I come back to it later. Um, I'm just constantly thinking about Osborne pretty much all the time. And so, yeah. I just, it just, you know, you've got kids, you're going to get disturbed. If you're going to be at home with your children and work, you're going to be at home with your children. And even though my children are pretty much, I'm meant to have mornings to myself, my eldest doesn't go to school because of his anxiety. So I still have my 13 year old at home pretty much every day. And he disturbs me just as much as a four year old. Um, yeah, life isn't perfect. Life is never going to be perfect. You don't ever think somebody's life is perfect. Don't ever look at someone else and go, oh, it's okay because their shit is together. It's not. You can hear my children moaning. You can hear my husband shouting. You know, our shit isn't together at all. Life is hard. It's not easy for me every day to fit it in. I struggle with um, in between trampolining lessons, having two ponies, um, going to four end meetings, being having a promotion group, having this group, being in the promotion tips group, being an established gold group, having a leaders group. Um, as I say, I'm guessing every single day where I put my time. I have no idea. There's 10 of you watching now. That's been pretty consistent, 10 to 15 the whole way through. I have no idea if anyone else is going to watch this back. I have no idea if anyone's going to watch this and go, yeah, actually, that's helped me. It could be a completely waste of an hour for all of us. I have no idea. But my gut says I can help and I want to help. So I want to try and do this. I want to try and get your questions answered. I want you guys to hear other people's success stories so you can learn from that and go and do it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'll try something else another day to get that message across. If it does work, brilliantly. That's fantastic. Tick. I can use it again another time. Um, we're all guessing and we're all just trying to do the best we can. Uh, my concern with recruiting is I don't want too much competition in the same area. You won't. You won't. So I've got a few people around me. It makes no difference. Um, don't hold back. In fact, Katie, isn't it better if you get people in your area working, you are then getting paid while they work, while you are doing other stuff? I don't know. That, for me, I much prefer my local team to go out and do local events, knowing that I'm still making money off that, and then I can work on bringing new people in. I can work with doing on doing some online sales or approaching some schools further afield and working with them remotely. I would not let that um, put you off. I've had a lot of doors. Uh, uh, do you know what? Some of those people who've got stores now this time next year won't be doing this business. And that's sad and it's horrible, but it's the way it is. Don't let it hold you back. Just keep, if you want it enough, I mean, if it's not your priority, if not your priority, if you want this business to succeed, don't worry about it. Find another way. Just find another stall. Find another baby group. Find another toddler group. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, and I'm not saying you're not going to come into hard times uh, or competition. Uh, work with people. Just get to know them. How about say to them, hey, we're all doing Osborne. Should we meet up for coffee? You might find out they've got events that they can't cover that they then pass on to you because you're nice and you reached out to them. I just, yeah, don't don't try and put problems that aren't there. People do that all the time. Um, they think something's a problem, then really, really, it's not. Uh, has anyone got any questions? I've loved speaking to you guys tonight. I, I, do you know, it's my favourite thing, is just being able to try and help someone else see what I see and get what I get. and. Us. Oh, do you know, I cannot wait to have one of you guys in the top earners, top 10 earner. I, I just dream of it. I want all of it. One day I want all of it. All be power in the top top earners because I know you can do it and I know you can be there and nothing makes me happier than when you guys get a huge paycheck or get a promotion and I just want you all to have that. I really, really hope this has helped in some way. I know every week you're going to have the most amazing stories. Um, you've got Amy Hancock next, Hancock Rogers next Monday night. She is just storming. Joined in January, promoted in April, storming it did not have it easy what well, didn't come like like that it wasn't magic she worked damn hard so you are going to love her story next week 
um, there was a new comment. Uh, yours is going to be so helpful, Amy. Honestly, because because you've got what I haven't, which is you've got being new and that being a new success story that's happened in the way the climate is now. Because my, how I did it was different, and it was a different world. But then, and, and the people in this group, um, much as I can tell them, I once was an organizer just like you guys, and I was once struggling, and I once found it hard because they didn't live through that journey with me. They can't see it, but having lived through your journey is going to be so so helpful for them. Um, I want to book in baby toddler groups. Won't they be back in September? There's some baby and toddler groups that um, run all through the summer, Melissa. So I would go for them. There's big agricultural fairs and things you can do in the summer. Create your own party in the park. Um, open up your garden for an open garden party. You know, if there's not events there, create your own. Go to sell at your gyms, or I met someone the other day. It's like, oh, yeah, my gym I go to, my Lloyd's gym has an Osborne organiser. So I buy like 30 quid's worth of books every time I see them. I'm like, brilliant. It's not know, you know who they are. I don't know if it's my team or someone else's team. This guy, every time he goes to the gym, he buys a book for his kids. Fantastic. That person's doing really well by getting into that event. Think outside the box. Um, create events if they're not there. Uh, I'm pressing on the wrong thing. Uh, I've come in late, but watch back. Absolutely, Sarah, when you get time. Such a good idea to reach out. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the more you can meet up with people, there it is, the more you connect, the more you become a person with a person, the better this business is because you're not doing it on. I don't want anyone to feel that they're on their own. Honestly, just message me if you need anything. If you want to talk, if you want to do a video chat, um, if you want me to do more of these things, let me know because I don't want anyone to feel like you're on their own because we're not because we're the most loving, welcoming family and all work together. And I just don't want you to feel like you're on your own. Um, oh, thank you, Ellie. Like, I think I, it's because I just love it. It's, it's so easy to be passionate about something when you love it so, so much. And you know, people make me happy. And there are so many people in this group for me to bounce ideas off and be around and support and help. So yeah, I am passionate. I'm not gonna deny it because I love what I do. And I, you know, if I had a magic wand, I would make all of you executive leaders overnight and I'd give you all my team and it would just be incredible. I, I don't have that magic wand. I can't do it for you. You have to do the work yourself. I can give you ideas. I can talk to you. I can be your cheerleaders. Um, I can't do the work for you. You have to do that yourself. Okay. I'm just see so if there's any more questions because I realise I have been um, talking for an hour. Just for the weekend, I have to mess around Birmingham still. Perfect. Brilliant. Oh, before I go, I will talk about leads. Um, so. And dream bigger. So Leeds training is booked for the 14th of September and it's going to be incredible. You're talking about being in the room with people and connecting with people. Come to the Leeds training. I think it's £35 for the day um, and then there's an overnight price as well. It's going to be incredible and I know some of you are going to go, it's too far. Some of you are going to go, I'm breastfeeding. I don't want to leave my children. That's fine. Ask yourself, are you self-sabotaging yourself or putting something barrier in the way per or actually can you get on the train for four hours could you drive five hours could you come up the night before could you bring your partner so you could nip out and breastfeed or could you express for that event you know, i don't know if that's really if, if your priority is not coming that's absolutely fine if you're putting a barrier in the way which perhaps you shouldn't be you can do it i can guarantee you come to that event you are going to gain skills you are going to gain information and you are going to learn so much Go and take your business out over that Christmas season and earn a lot of money. Um, if you don't want to go, don't go for it. Dream bigger, get your dream bigger tickets as well. They are going to be amazing. Um, go for it. Yeah, get get out to a company event. Honestly, if I hadn't have gone to that gala, I don't know if you guys would be here today because I got to that company event and my mind went because it was just just incredible. It's just incredible to hear the passion and to watch those people go up on stage and to win these travelling centres and to get these awards and get oh, just just come just come to these events because they're brilliant and you meet and you're nervous. I my God, are you nervous? My first leadership academy, I was six days away from my due date. I was petrified. I didn't know anyone in the room. I smelt like I 
felt like such a fake. I had imposter syndrome, classic imposter syndrome going, I don't deserve to be here. What am I doing here? All these people are like Osborne superstars and I'm just like this pregnant lump of a person who doesn't know what they're doing and is just making it up as she goes along and doing things a bit differently to everyone else. My God, if I could see me now, that person back then, what a difference. What a difference. And if I hadn't gone to event, if I hadn't have gone through that fear and, and gone ahead even though I felt that way, just, uh, just just such a difference. And I just, I just want you all to have it. I want you all to have it so, so bad. Um, at the early bird, it's, it's cheaper for Dream Bigger at the moment. Okay, to come to Dream Bigger, it would be amazing to have you there. Uh, if I buy a ticket and then promote and pay to go, yep, you get it refunded. So if you then, if you buy your early bird ticket and then you get a promotion, um, then you absolutely get that money refunded back. So don't worry about that. Uh, so it's going to be, it's going to be amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, I'm buzzing. Um, so I'm going to go because I have been on here now an hour and seven minutes. Um, so I've probably talked to you enough. But if you keep uh, writing any comments, I will come back and answer them. If you're watching the replay, just put hashtag replay so I know it's being watched back. Um, and yeah, and I will come back and answer any other questions later. So, after you all, thank you for for watching and sticking by, and I will catch up with you later. Bye. -bye.